Daniel? In, uh, hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> on Hi. Earth. That's cute. Hello? Hello. Yeah. Yes. Hey. So, Russell, we've, we've talked before through email, and I called in once before. Um, mm -hmm. I'm calling about the uh, topic of evidence. And so clearly theists don't have any kind of physical evidence. I was born and raised one of Jehovah's Witnesses just barely recently started transitioning outside of, out of the religion. Um, but I, I guess the things that I cling to sometimes that I keep thinking about would be categorized as maybe like circumstantial evidence. Okay. Such as, and okay. So like just the things like the, the moral argument, the, I think it's called the teleological argument. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. just, what I, is that basically? I do just, remember you know, those looked, terms from uh, back when I was in debate club, but they're not yeah. really fresh in my memory. I think uh, there's ontological, which has to do with meaning, and teleological, which has to do with um, help. Yeah, I can't remember. Now. <laughs> I, I, I can't recall. So I guess, yeah, no, my question No, is, seriously, what is teleological? I'm oh, trying to remember. I, it, <laughs> I believe that's the one that's, Basically, like look at look at nature, look at uh, yeah. the universe, yeah. look at the okay. order, right? evidence like, of order. That, yeah, yeah. Fine tuning. Um, that, gotcha. I believe that. Okay, I know yeah. what you're talking about now. Yeah. Um, this one's more controversial. I don't want to get into it, but I guess I personally still look at a lot of scriptural principles, scriptural guidelines that are beneficial for us in a Whoa. in a day to day okay. life. Okay. Um, I mean that's a really long topic. I don't wanna I mean I could expand if you guys want, but you probably um, should because you're saying that this constitutes some kind of circumstantial evidence for God. So I well, I don't know I what guess, you mean unless I get an example. I guess bef what I'm more curious about is does that carry any merit? In your guys' opinion, I don't know. Yeah. You didn't Even give me an example yet. Yeah. Well, okay. So, um, I wasn't I wasn't prepared to talk too much about that. Hmm. I what I guess what I'm saying is just just on its on its own. Even let's just say for argument's sake, it is. I I give you a really good example of of certain you know principles that you know it's almost like the argument from the user manual of the Bible, where it's like God made us, God gave us a user manual, which is the Bible, and it's, it is the best way to live life. Yeah. I'm, I'm not even saying that absolutely, because I don't believe that absolutely, but um, would that even carry any weight in your opinion? You know, I, because I, it is strictly circumstantial. Having, having read the Bible, um, more than once, okay. Um, mm -hmm. I'm struggling to come up with something in the Bible that I would consider to be like a user manual level advice. Yeah, there that are... that didn't also exist in other cultures separate from the culture that wrote the Bible. I yeah, I see, and I I guess like I said, I wasn't exactly ready to go on about this. Well, I just. And then, then it's not I, like um, we think that the Bible says nothing valid, but that that right, just means right. the Bible isn't a hundred percent false or full of bad advice. If, yeah. if it's ninety percent full of bad advice, that's still a generally bad track record. Even if it had ninety percent good advice, and it still had specific instructions for how to enslave other human beings, um, I wouldn't consider right. it a user manual for how to live. I've read a lot of books that have good advice, and I don't think any of them come from God. <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and that's honestly kind of what I've been telling people that are, are questioning how I could leave my religion. And I, I tell them that I still believe in pretty much all the good stuff. I just don't believe in the supernatural part of it. Mm -hmm. Right. There's something, there's a and, term that John Loftus coined, I think, which is called the outsider test for faith. Yep. Which is 
when somebody makes an argument to you about God, like, for instance, oh, my holy book is full of good advice, ask, they should ask themselves, if I heard an almost identical argument being advanced for a different religion, would I find that convincing? And if they wouldn't, then it's not a good argument for your religion either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess the overall question I'm just curious about is, do those, even if those circumstantial arguments are good arguments, do they ultimately carry any weight? Because I, I feel like it's like when people say they question evolution, you guys say, okay, let's say evolution is false. How does that prove God exists? Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Is that basically what it comes down to? Even if it's a good circumstantial, even if it's good just kind of um, mm. general argument. If it was it a doesn't... good circumstantial argument, then it might influence me in some way. Yeah. But, but I don't think... I mean, your your inability to come up with even one example speaks volumes about the actual yeah. quality of these arguments. Well, and the thing is, I mean, even if the Bible um, contained nothing but good advice, so there was no genocide, there was no slavery, you know, none of the none of the bad stuff, and it was just you know a book of totally good advice. How would that be circumstantial evidence of a god? given that there's nothing in the Bible that you couldn't find in some other culture that didn't produce the Bible. I guess I'm not, I, I'm not even saying it's, it's, um, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> like I said, I, I didn't have this on my mind when I called in and I, I can give like one example. I think it's in like second Corinthians seven, one where it's just, it's, a, and it's more about principles, right? It doesn't specifically say, don't smoke cigarettes, but the the scripture does say basically to not. Um, I I can't think of the exact reading of it, but basically to not um, corrupt your body, right? And so if okay. you were to to take that, like you could, you know, there's certain steps like uh, applying that that you don't have to have the Bible say don't do cocaine because or don't smoke cigarettes, even though cigarettes weren't around when the Bible was written. But yeah, none of those you, were around. You know, I I would imagine I can speculate on what they were talking about. Maybe they they noticed that if you overeat, you get a stomach ache, or sure. Just generally, and, and honestly, don't don't overdo stuff because we notice it has bad consequences. But even to the extent that that's good advice, I can't see how that's not something that just a normal observant human being could come up with. And it has nothing to do with whether a God exists or not. But the other thing is that uh, that particular verse, uh, 2 Corinthians 7, 1, um, the verse is, Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, mm. perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. So that's not even actually taking care of yourself. It's basically sort of a, an admonishment to you know, purify yourself so that you're basically a better servant for God. Stop thinking about stuff that isn't Christianity is yeah. basically <laughs> what that comes down to. Yeah. So, I mean, that's... You don't think when it says to not contaminate our, our body and spirit, it's saying, like, you know, to, to stay away from things that could do bodily harm. Or well, no, even it, it's, if you substituted... It's too Sorry, vague to nail that down. Yeah, I mean... It just sounds like you're superimposing a meaning on it that you want it to say. I guess, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying... I, I told you guys, I'm, I'm basically of the opinion that anything that's good in there is good because humans are capable of being wise on their own, right? I'm not right. saying yeah. everything has to come from... I'm, I'm more saying, is there... Is there any anything with circumstantial evidence ever even do anything for you, or does it matter? Not matter because there's no physical evidence of God. Well, I mean, and, circumstantial evidence could uh, could be persuasive. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. we convict people of crimes based on circumstantial evidence all the time. So it's not like that has no bearing at all. It's just I'm struggling to understand what you mean by circumstantial evidence, and and basically, you know. I, until I understand what you're talking about, I can't even evaluate the, the quality yeah. of the evidence. Yeah, for, for some things, Whoa. 
the quality of evidence matters. And I'm sure you've heard extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Mm -hmm. It's very much like if you're going to a car dealer and he says, this car has really good gas mileage, then there are a small number of things he could do to demonstrate that the car, yeah, probably has good gas mileage. They're not 100% reliable, but you don't need a huge amount of information to buy his talking point that the car has good gas mileage. But if he says, and by the way, this is a futuristic back to the future car that can fly, and you're asking me, is there any amount of circumstantial evidence that can demonstrate that? My answer is, well, uh, I'd be really surprised by a flying car, so I'd really like to just see it fly. Like, my standards are way, way higher for that claim than the good gas mileage claim. And I think God is one of the hugest, most out there claims that I've ever heard of, personally. Right. And again, I'm not trying to make this as an argument for why you guys should believe in God. I'm right. But I think that works. It works on the opposite view too, where atheists will use circumstantial evidence. Like, for example, I I heard a uh, David Smalley the other day and on his podcast and he was talking to a Christian couple and he was bringing up how God would kill every man, woman, and child. And he was using that as an example that there's no way a loving God could ever do that. And I don't know what your opinions are on that, but I assume you might have a similar thinking. I well, think that arguments about what a God would or should do are one of the weakest atheist arguments, personally. Well, but the thing about it is if he's talking about the Christian God or the Abrahamic God, mm -hmm. um, according to um, the Bible, that God did command that sort of genocide. And so if, if people are presenting an argument that this is um, a loving God, you know, commanding a genocide uh, pretty neatly refutes that. What if there was a greater good for all of humanity, though? Then uh, I think well, then, the onus is on the person trying to make that argument yeah. and not on us. Anyway, uh, I think uh, we're going to move on to the next caller. All right, thanks. So, thank All right, you for calling. Thanks. Bye. Bye.